Well, welcome to Biz with Rich. I'm Rich, editor of Under the Radar Report. It's great to be back, back on this um, forever wet day that we're experiencing this spring. But for obvious reasons, people, I couldn't go past this little number. That's right. Slick Rick's Rampaging Red Ale. Straight from Yuli's Brews in Alexandria, New South Wales. Well, let's hope there's not much of a resemblance. But anyway, let's crack it. <laughs> not too much froth. Mm. Rampaging red. Not bad, a bit malty. I think I was warned about that. Mm. Seeing, not seeing red yet. But let's hope in this topic that I'm going to talk about, people don't see too much red because I'm talking IPOs. I'm going to go through three from the past 12 months or so. Then I'm going to show you almost the opposite of an IPO, a great stock that might emerge from an old company. I'll leave you to guess which one that is. So look, IPOs, it's a, bit, it's a heated topic by definition. So much effort goes into promoting IPOs, it's not funny. It often boils down to one thing though, people trying to make quick money in a hot market. People trying to get out, people trying to cash out for various reasons, people trying to take a clip. The question is, is it worth you being on the other side? So often with the businesses um, that I'm going to be look at, looking at and often in you know the businesses that come through the IPO um, process, they're actually good businesses. But I think the point is that many that are going through this process that at the moment that we're seeing are very expensive. Most have little track records, so there's not much to go, to go by. Most aren't even profitable. And they're being priced on valuations that have many multiples of sales. Whenever you see a valuation that's based on sales, you have to be very skeptical. I mean, these are often going to be profitable stocks. You know, let me tell you from my experience, you can only have so many gonna bees in your portfolio. You don't want to get it caught in a stock that is overhyped, and then you know when the tide goes out, you're left, you know, you know, you're left literally high and dry. Like Newix's stock is less than a quarter of the price it was, you know, less than 12 months ago, which is just after it IPO'd. So the bottom line for me is that of all the all the floats that a group like Macquarie come up with, like they come up with, they're a float factory. They might be a millionaire's factory, but they're also a float factory. You'd actually be better off investing in the mothership, investing in the millionaire's factory itself. Every company that's listing is attracting a valuation in line with the market, but not necessarily, especially right now, in line with the fundamental value of the company. So if it's good value, it's most likely that you won't actually get any stock in the IPO. So you know, often these things are priced for a squeeze. They're priced to run hard. You, you, you often, as I said, get businesses that don't have a lot of history, which let me tell you means they don't necessarily have a lot of future. So we're always nervous about IPOs without much history for obvious reason. So let's look at some of these stocks and these stocks have been actually pretty good um, performers. One I couldn't go past was Step One Clothing. Let's have a toast. STP, direct to consumer men's underwear. That's worth a swig of beer, that one. 1.25 million pairs of organic under, underpants sold to 725,000 customers. That's a lot of undies. So pro, pro forma gross margins over 18, 80%. EBITDA doesn't look as good. EBITDA margin 17%, but it's had strong revenue growth. Most uh, a good a good sign is repeat customers, which are 47% repeat customers. So peace. So men and probably their partners are going back for more undies. Founder Greg Taylor retains 66%. So that's a big you know. So that means there's not much. There's not much stock available. But basically, you know, on the prospectus forecasts of 74 million sales, this is trading on seven times sales. Expensive. 
so they can't afford any hiccups. Cobram Estate Olives, CBO, extra virgin olive oil. We've gone from men's underwear to extra virgin. Like the full gamut, the full gamut here at Beers. Oh, it's not bad. It sort of grows on you, like the olive oil, which many of you will have probably tried. Cobram, I mean, it's pretty common. Listed August 2021. So vertically integrated, tree to table, claims to be the branded market leader in Australia. But I mean, you know, it's basically an Australian kind of company. Um, about so about thirty percent of its sales are, or less actually uh, come out of the US. So total sales for FY twenty two forecast one hundred and forty million, putting it on around a five and a half times sales multiple. That's pretty expensive, people. That's pretty expensive for a stock where you've got loads of agricultural risk, like crop revaluate revaluation estimates let me tell you based on those accounting principles the earnings go everywhere and they they're really volatile so it's not cheap it's high quality brand in a key food category but it's not cheap it does have international potential but there's a lot of risk a lot of agricultural risk i would always be very hesitant in paying so much money for a stock with such seasonal factors and actually this one was like really impressed me. I don't know it very well. Like um, one of our an other analysts looked at it, Setire Group. I'm not even sure that's how you pronounce it. Luxury online retailer. Founder Dean Mintz, 66% owner. So he's cashed out a bit, but still retains a huge interest. It's a no inventory model, integrating its technology into its suppliers distribution systems to create an efficient to the door experience for customers. Who doesn't want that from luxury to the door? I mean, this thing's sales growth is phenomenal. I mean, it made 100 million in sales last year, but you look at the forecast, doubling, tripling, ad, infin ad infinitum, like who knows where this thing's going? All I know is it's got a 1.5 billion market capitalization. That, that means a lot of blue skies is priced in. So you cannot afford hiccups. You know, maybe maybe surf them for a while, but I tell you what, it's a it's a dangerous world you're inhabiting you're in, you're inhabiting from a retail uh, from a you know investor perspective. So let's look at another one. This is at the other end of the spectrum. AMP, the bombed out financial services previous behemoth. This is trading at a discount to its net asset value. You know, versus the banks that are on multiples of their net assets. This is a company being resuscitated by a new CEO who's actually looks pretty, who's doing the business and slimming down the group. But the most amazing thing I find about AMP is that with everything it's gone through, I mean, and let's let's face it, it's gone through a lot. It's a it's 150 year old brand is still still seems to stand strong. I mean, that's amazing in itself. Not only that, but we see a spying opportunity in, its pro in the progress of its demerger from its um, from its marquee business, um, AMP Capital. So there's opportunity to look uh, to think about that over the weekend. Read more in our blue chip publication out today. What's coming up? Well, we tell you how to build a portfolio. Let's have a sweep to that. We continue our run of subscriber picks and new IPOs. We focus on some interesting med tech stocks in our med tech fintech series. Look, thank you for listening. Great to be a part of it. Here's to making money on the boss.